From one tragedy to another, the Amityville Horror House has seen its fair share of darkness. <laughs> Almost every single family that has lived in the Amityville house has seen its fair share of tragedy. At least one person has passed away from each family, except for the Lutz family. If you don't know anything about the Amityville house, you know, it first got on everybody's radar with the DeFeo family when Ronald DeFeo decided he would murder all of his family members. And since then, it's been in the public eye, and more so with the Lutz family, who after 28 days of living there, had to run for their lives and pick up their lives up in California. So, I decided I was going to see what the heck was in that house, or is in that house, because I know for certain that the entity or entities that dwell there on that property have not completely disappeared quite yet. With that being said, that has allowed the negative energy to pretty much accumulate on that property. So I'm going to be discussing my findings, my thoughts, and we're gonna have a discussion about this Amityville house. One of the main reasons I wanted to look into this house is because you know there's some hearsay about the Warrens and how this whole thing with this house was just BS for a money grab and to make money off of books and movies and well I disagree especially because of the things that I had seen during my channeling of this house so I want to talk about Ronald DeFeo really quick and why he did what he did. Obviously, you know, I'm not trying to give any excuses for him, okay? So that's not what this is, but I fully believe that he was possessed and that a demonic entity did trick him into killing his entire family. But so, the thing is, with the DeFeos, there was a lot of shit going on, point blank. You know, you already had negative energy in that space from previous families, previous history of Native Americans. It was a Native American burial ground, which, you know, not to put a house on, but you know, they did it anyway. Then you add somebody with a bad temperament who has their own attachment with substance abuse problems. And what do you get as a result? you get tragedy and you get possession and that's pretty much what happened there. A lot of people are skeptical about, but the thing is, before the tragedy with the DeFeos, Mr. DeFeo had gone to a priest to bless the house. If this was a hoax from the Lutzes, how would they even like control that? They can't because it's not a hoax. Then you have the Lutzes. They have statues around the home that they brought and they brought a priest over to bless the house. So do you guys notice a correlation here? The DeFeos get that house blessed. Six months later, you know, you have the tragedy with Ronald DeFeo murdering the entire family. Then the Lutz family, after they moved in, got the house blessed by a Catholic priest. And then all hell broke loose. Why? Because in each scenario, when they blessed the house and did what they did, it pissed off the entity. Demonic entities have an aversion to, well, you know, anything holy or God related. But so many people thought this was a hoax 
because other people would go to the house and nothing would happen. And then you had a family move in right after the Lutz family and nothing happened. And people are like, oh, well, nothing happened to them, so it must have been all fake. Well, there are two reasons why this can happen. One, when the Lutzes went to California, they had exorcisms done and eradicated the entity, cut the cords from them. And it could have, you know, weakened it, could have banished it to where there wouldn't be any issues in that house. Or the demon is lying in wait, waiting for the perfect candidate to sink its teeth in. Now, because of the tragic events that happened and they were kind of somewhat close together and now everyone's like paying attention to that house, those entities are going to lay low because they know that if they dick around, they're going to get their ass canned. Someone's going to come along and cleanse them out and they don't want that. So they're going to wait. They have all of eternity to wait. It doesn't matter. Time is nothing to them. They're immortal, essentially. They don't disappear. Like, they can outlast every single one, every single person on this earth. They can wait, and they are going to wait. And, you know, when I was doing the channeling, that's what they're doing. They're waiting everybody out. And, two, it's like not everyone's going to experience the haunting because... Like I said, they're going to single certain people out. They're going to single out that perfect candidate. And the thing is, they want to do that purposely because if they can separate people from a support system, it's easier to wear them down. And if they have no faith to fall back on, that's even worse because it's like, then they've got nothing They've got nothing for protection. And that's what happened with Ronald DeFeo. Plus, with Ronald DeFeo, because he was into drugs, you know, it kind of messes up his ability to make rational decisions and judgment calls. And it's going to, depending on the drug, alter your state of reality. And again, it'll make it so much easier for the entity. You're, you're literally making it easier for them. You're doing the work for them, basically, when you're doing that kind of stuff. And a hallucination to a demonic entity when someone's on drugs, probably they don't even have to do much because they're probably already hallucinating. But they're going to make it worse. And or just, you know, make hallucinations if you're not hallucinating to trick you into doing, you know, bad things. Let's talk about the pig in the daughter's room of Missy Lutz. So George Lutz saw a pig looking thing look out his daughter's window at him. And you know, for people who know the Bible, who are into Christianity or Catholicism, you know, in the Bible, it states that pigs are unclean and a good way to trigger somebody that's, you know, dealing with paranormal activity and to scare them is to uh, shapeshift into a pig because they know that it's not good. And yeah, so the whole thing with that was the entity was trying to scare the bejesus out of them. And it worked. Missy, of course, because she's a child at the time, made friends with it. And uh, yeah, so when you make friends with entities and you start talking to them, you build a line of communication which is a string or an energy cord and can essentially become an attachment later down the road. Also gives it permission to stay. Now they do say that Kathy's face turned into like a really old woman's face and look creepy as fuck. And how George Lutz had a problem getting warm. Like his body was so cold that he was so obsessed with putting the fire wood into the fireplace so he could warm himself. And the thing is with that, both those things are connected. Why? Because that is the negative entity sucking out and absorbing the energy. Now there's a thing called the psychic cold. That's when energy is taken from your body and it leaves you so cold that you can't get warm. 
And that entity absorbed the energy from Kathy, which is why her face looked like that of an 80-year-old woman. And the fact that the entity was able to do that like that is bad. That is such a severe haunting. Now, typically, when you have things happen that quickly, as described in all the stories, you're not dealing with an earthbound spirit. You're not dealing with a poltergeist. You're dealing with a demonic entity. So, like, earthbound spirits and poltergeist thought forms, whatever, they can do that. However, it's over time and over a period time. And so it happens, and if it goes unchecked, you can have the same result. But because it happens so quickly, yeah, not human, not human created, it is demonic. Now, it is said that George Lutz was seeing faces in the fire. He was seeing hooves. Then you had the fly infestation. Those are called airports. I'm probably saying it wrong. I forget how it's pronounced. So basically... Airports are when you are given a hallucination. Sometimes only one person can see it. Sometimes an entire family can see it, but nobody else. Sometimes everybody can see it, but it's not really there. But yeah, it's pretty much an illusion that is fed to you into thinking that something is there. So in the case of the fly infestation, the hooves in the snow, the faces in the fire, those are all examples. Another one would be the ectoplasm. I'm calling it ectoplasm, which is the goo. The goo that was found around the house. In addition, you know, there were claims that people were levitating. There were sounds, bangs, doors sounding like they were being ripped off the hinges. Physical health issues. Things moving around. In an interview with the Warrens, Lorraine Warren says, typically these entities go after the weakest link, whether that's through mental health, physical health, or spiritual health. And it's true. When people only have their personal knowledge to fall back on, that's where there's trouble. Why? So as a human species, we don't know everything. Hell, we don't even know everything about ourselves, let alone anything outside of that. So now we're going to be delving into the paranormal, right? We don't know all the entities that exist. We don't know all that they are capable of. And, you know, when we don't know something, that's how fear begins to creep in. When you have faith or religion to fall back on, that's when you have something outside of yourself and something to fall back on for support. And it's something much bigger. Faith brings security, confidence, love, protection, and so much more. And many times it's all you need to stand up to the dark forces. So that's why I tell clients that when they come to me for help, it doesn't matter what religion they follow or what deity they worship. As long as, you know, the deities within the religion are benevolent, whether you're Hindu, you're Christian, Catholic, Jewish, doesn't matter because you have deities in that belief system that will protect you. Now the Lutz family, when they decided to book it and go to San Diego, California, they noticed that the paranormal activity followed them. And they also noticed that when they would talk about it, stuff would happen. So because of their immense fear and the amount of energy they put in the recognition of the entity itself and the things it was doing, it pretty much attracted it to them. This is because they're remaining in that same frequency of while they're being haunted, they're afraid, right? And so they're talking about it and they're afraid and it's the same level of fear as when they're experiencing that haunting. So that's why, you know, that happened in other places, not just the home. This is why if you're somebody who has psychic abilities, who's sensitive to energy frequencies, and you know is a medium or what have you you have to be very careful when you watch documentaries when you listen to podcasts when you read do research whatever on real entities and things because for those that are sensitive you can unknowingly match the frequency of that haunting in that entity and that creates a direct line a direct bridge if you will for that entity to come back 
and uh, yeah, mess things up for you. I had to learn that the hard way. When I watch this kind of stuff in documentaries, I have to make sure that I put the intention out of, I am not trying to connect to these entities, I'm watching for entertainment purposes only, and that, you know, I'll put my shield up, and I'll just make sure that ain't nothing coming coming in my space. Heck no. So when you guys, you know, get into entertainment that deals with paranormal things, definitely put your protection up and put the intention that, you know, you don't want to have that thing come to you. But yeah, psychics and mediums and sensitives accidentally tap into that frequency and then that entity knows that and they see that you're tuned in and yeah, that's how they uh, they make an appearance. They make a guest appearance in your life. So do you guys know that famous picture with that little boy like looking around the corner with the glowing eyes? So Ed Warren says that is a demonic entity. I have to agree that is a demonic entity. It's not residual energy. It's not a residual haunting from the children that were murdered. Now, because it is very known that there were children there and they passed away in the house or around the property, the entity knows that and it's trying to trick you into, you know, communicating with it, being friends with it, so it can pretty much create a tether on you. So, the way I tell now just know every medium is different the way they perceive things and their abilities and so on and so forth. But the way I perceive the difference between residual hauntings versus earthbound spirits versus demonic entities is how the energy feels. When you have a residual haunting, aka an energetic imprint of that person's like day-to-day -day activities or hobbies or whatever, or habits, like you can feel there's some thickness to it but it's not heavy. It's like, weight-wise, it's not heavy, but it's like thick, if that makes sense. But then when you have like um, demonic hauntings, it is heavy AF, and it's hard to, like, you're like gasping for air. Like for me, it severely affects me because I'm clairsentient. So it's like, there is a world difference between how the energy feels. Earthbound spirits are kind of like in the middle. They also state that George Lutz was, you know, into the occult and active and did rituals and stuff. Now the thing is, from what I can tell, just like how, you know, Ronald DeFeo was influenced and possessed, I also feel something similar when it comes to George Lutz and doing those rituals. I feel like he was influenced to do those than him being interested before moving into this space. But it's also possible that they influenced him knowing that he was involved into that stuff. But when you do, you know, black magic rituals, it only adds to the negative entities, into the negative energies. It's not good. Now, the family members do admit to partaking in transcendental meditation practices and they suspect that maybe that made things worse. So meditation in general is really, really good. It's good for your health, mental and physical, and your spiritual health. Meditation by itself doesn't attract things. However, if you're somebody that has a natural inclination to certain abilities, you're gonna be able to see, sometimes, you're going to be able to see things that already existed. It's not that you're attracting things, it's more of you're being more aware of what was already there. That's why it's always important to, you know, set up your boundaries, have your psychic protection going on. But they didn't have any of that. They didn't have any of that at all. So the Montauk natives said that the area was tainted by negative spirits, and then the Shinnecock natives had their own little enclosure on that property where they would take care of the sick and the dying. So yeah, that's adding to the negative energy and whatnot to that property. 
And then the thing with it following the Lutzes when they went to California, well, at that point, you know, some of them were so severely affected that the entity had become an attachment, especially to George Lutz, because he was having the most problems when it came to influence. So it became more of an attachment for him. And it's because of his trauma with, you know, growing up, um, being a war veteran, you know, somebody in that situation sees a lot of traumatizing things. And it's a great place for an entity to utilize and to rub salt in the wound and just keep recycling that negative energy food wheel, if you will. The exorcism done on the Lutzes was successful in cutting the cords from that demonic entity, though there's still residual energy from that and they need to get that stuff cleansed out if they haven't already because it can still create problems within the human body. And even though it might seem that the house might not be haunted right now and that the exorcism when done on George Lutz kind of like quieted the activity in the house. I fully and strongly believe if someone tries to bless that house, that shit's gonna get pissed off again and it's just gonna be another cycle of the same thing. That entity is lying in wait. It's waiting for the perfect person. Now I'm gonna give my psychic impressions from when I did the channeling. So just having the thought of wanting to channel information from that space, from that house, um, brought something dark into my room and it was just like a massive black shadow that was as tall as the ceiling and it wasn't good. I could feel the heaviness in the energy and I knew it wasn't good because it started to make me feel afraid and I don't get afraid anymore of these things. It's sometimes I'll get anxiety like, oh shit, I gotta get this thing out, right? But this thing tried to intimidate me using my own ailments trying to make my pain happen all at once from all my chronic, you know, illnesses, it tried. It also tried to, um, it was so weird. Like it made me feel like it was snapping my neck from the base and it hurt so bad. I felt like I was going to die. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a break and I'm going to make sure I have my holy oil on all my chakras, have my black obsidian crystal, and make sure I got my armor on and everyone's protected before I fuck around and find out. And so once I did that, everything was fine, but I thought, mm, I probably should not, you know, astral project over there because I don't want any tethers from that area. And so I decided that I would ask one of the dryads on the property to give me some information. And uh, it had some things to say. So the first thing it showed me was land formations. Like the continents and the land masses like coming together and whatnot. At first I was like, what does that mean? That's, that doesn't give me anything. Or so I thought. And then I heard Claire cognizantly energy breakdown. And then I was like, okay, that makes sense. And then I heard ley lines. If you don't know what ley lines are, um, they're pretty much natural energy lines of the earth. And I'll put up a map, but I heard ley lines. This spot is directly on top of a ley line. So, you know, being me, I gotta check and make sure I'm not cray cray. And I did, and yo, that house, that city is exactly on a ley line. Even if, you know, a location is like close by, not on it, you can still have some crazy paranormal activity, but this location is directly on it. So that's great validation. But with that being said, when you have ley lines and stuff, that means the veil in that area is thinner. You have more issues when it comes to paranormal activity because more things come through, more things can interact with the environment. And because that space already had so much negative energy, it attracted some bad shit. Now the natives that inhabited that area, 
recognized this and they knew about it and they tried to do their own rituals and things to stop it. However, I'm pretty sure all that did was add insult to injury and I think it made it worse. I then at some point saw a male with dark, almost black hair, like short hair, and then he had like black facial hair. I don't know who that is. It could have been a previous person that lived there. I don't know. I didn't get anything else other than that, but I saw that guy's face. When I asked the dryad what entities are in that location, he told me, and I'll, I'll give you the exact word that they used. The exact word was forsaken. And then they gave me an image of a character from a show I'm watching who is kind of like really evil and stuff. And so that made me think, well, typically forsaken means those that have been left behind are lost. But in this context, it was giving me demon evil vibes in that it was very dark. But in addition to that, you have some earthbound spirits that are lingering around. You have some thought forms created from the Native Americans and their rituals and um, thought forms that were created from the residual negative energy of that location and from all that tragedy. From doing the channeling, they were very adamant in telling me that that entity is still there and it's lying in wait for its next victim. So with that being said, that space is still haunted. Even if they're not seeing any paranormal activity right now, um, it's still, still haunted by a demonic entity. And, you know, I get really excited when it comes to cases like this, but specifically, you know, I wanna go see The Conjuring House in person. I, however, do not want to see the Amityville house in person. That's probably one house I don't want to set foot around. So, anyway, that is what I got from the Amityville house. Um, anybody else, like, look into that one? If so, let me know what you got psychically and or if you guys, did anybody investigate it? Because I didn't see anybody doing investigations in that house, which I highly recommend not doing. Though if people are living there, you know, you probably can't investigate it anyway. So anyway, hopefully you learned something new in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, tomorrow. Peace, sisa. If you like these types of videos, I highly recommend watching the one where I react to a video about The Conjuring House.